Ahoy! And welcome back to Leia's library. Find yourself a cozy corner, get yourself something cozy to drink, and let's get started. Today we will be going- oh my gosh, what are we doing today? Oh, I forgot what I'm doing. I'm a professional. Today, we will be looking at some of my favorite lines from various books. I did- I did a a video sort of similar to this before where it's lines that made me realize a book was going to be good um, but this is a little different uh, those ones were lines that were usually found kind of earlier on in a book and like were a line that I read and went oh this is this is gonna be a good one um, but this video is more about just like my favorite lines in books that I have read or some of my favorite lines in books that I have read uh, because I have read so many books at this point in my life, I can't keep track of all of them. What is up with my lighting? Why does it keep doing this? Is that better? No, that looks worse. What is going on? Okay, I just couldn't do the cold lighting today, I guess, so we're with this. We make it look better in cold lighting. Anyway, let's get into it. Where's my tea? So I'm going to be doing these in alphabetical order based on the title of the book. Uh, so this first quote comes from Alone by Megan E. Freeman. This is on page 107. Maybe God sends us nightmares so our living reality doesn't seem so bad when we wake up. Until we wake up and remember we are living in a nightmare we can't escape except by going to sleep. That one hits really hard. I kept thinking about that line for a long time after I'd read this book. And there's just something so like visceral about it. Like I get a visceral feeling from reading that. That's kind of hard to explain. It's like, I have felt that. <laughs> I have, I have, being in a place where like I couldn't sleep but being awake was just as much of a nightmare and yeah it just it was this was just so perfectly captured that sentiment and it just sticks with me so much the next one is from the boy the mole the fox and the horse by charlie maxi um, which I definitely bring up a lot, so I apologize for that. Uh, it has so many good lines in it, that's why. Um, and this one is my favorite. There's something I haven't told you, said the horse. What's that? said the boy. I can fly, but I stopped because it made other horses jealous. We'll love you, whether you can fly or not. Okay. I just there's something about the 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 just the word okay like just that acceptance and like also you see in the image that he grows his he starts off just a horse and then he grows his wings back once he gets that affirmation from his friends and then he says okay and it's so simple it's so simple it's literally just the word okay and yet somehow that hit so hard of like just being able to accept that other people care about you or can care about you no matter what perceived flaws you have is just my heart. <laughs> this next one is from Circe by Madeline Miller and is the inspiration for why I chose this mug today and why I'm wearing this makeup, which I put on to match the mug. Um, also, side note, this mug is like $30 on David's Tea, and I got it at a thrift store for four. Anyway, right, Circe by Madeline Miller, this quote. Some people are constellations that only touch the earth for a season. There are going to be some people that you meet that you only know for a short time, but that doesn't make their their friendship any less valuable or their time that they spent in your life any less valuable and like sometimes you can 
meet someone for like just a moment and have your entire life changed or your entire outlook on life changed. And I think that comparing people to constellations that only briefly touch your sky, that's so lovely. And I love that sentiment. And it makes it easier to think about, you know, some of the people that I have kind of moved away from in my life. It's just like, it's sad that they're not still here. It's sad that they're not still constellations in my sky. But they were beautiful while they were there, and I can I can still look back on those those times very fondly, even if they are a little bittersweet now. Wow, I didn't mean for this video to be just Leia gets really emotional for 12 minutes or whatever. Okay, this one's less emotional. Uh, this next one is from The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson, and it is this is one that could have made it on the the uh, lines that made me realize the book was going to be good list because it's literally the first line of the book and I wish I'd remembered when I made that video no live organism can continue for long to exist sanely under conditions of absolute reality <laughs> it's giving very we're all mad here <laughs> It's also very similar to another quote that is on this list, which I'm kind of pairing with this one because they are so similar, which is from Hogfather by Terry Pratchett. Humans need fantasy to be human, to be the place where the falling angel meets the rising ape. And just this whole notion that like, the, the quote goes on for, for much longer than that, but it's like dialogue, so it's kind of hard to summarize nicely. But yeah, just the idea that they're kind of they're they're you know similar but oh I'm holding three books they're they're similar but different like the the hogfather quote is more about how like just fantasy and believing in things is an intrinsic part of human nature and it's it's who and what we are whereas the haunting of hill house is more <laughs> i mean it is a horror book kind of like it seems where like haunt, hill house is kind of where dreams go to die <laughs> so they are you know they do definitely have their differences but the phrasing is sort of similar enough that i'm putting them sort of together um and i love both of them equally this next one is from hollow pox by jessica townsend on page 452 and 453. This is something that Jupiter North is saying to Morrigan. Um, Morrigan is very distraught because she just realized that she left her her favorite childhood plushie um, back in the home that she had to flee. Um, and she realizes, through various events, she realizes that her two half-brothers who still live there, they aren't giving him the care that she did. So this is something that Jupiter is saying to Morrigan as a constellation. And and the plushie is a, a rabbit named Emmett. I'm so sorry your brothers didn't care for Emmett as they should have, as you did. But listen, I bet they love him more than you think. And if they don't now, they will. When they get older and smarter, they'll know who he belonged to, even if they don't know they know. That's how it works with friends like Emmett, who have been so dearly loved. They wear that love like an invisible coat. It never comes off, it's always there. And in the quiet moments, you can feel it. Your brothers will feel it one day. I love this because, it's, this, is gonna, this is gonna sound a little silly, but I find that a lot of adults, when they have children and their children get, you know, stuffed animals and toys, adults tend to forget the significance or like just how much those stuffed animals and toys mean to their kids and you know there inevitably comes a time when you maybe go on a trip you stay at a hotel your kid brings their favorite plushie along with them and they end up forgetting it at the hotel and a lot of parents will just go oh, i'll buy you another one but like it's not the same <laughs> i i'm a grown adult and do you know what i have plushies and this isn't even all of them these are just the ones that are in the living room not even all the ones that are in the living room but yeah i love 
plushies and I think people forget that like when you're a little child when you're a small child and you maybe don't interact with a lot of other people yet whether because you're not in school yet or you're homeschooled or you're just socially awkward and anxious and not very good at making friends yet your stuffed animals are kind of like your first friends <laughs> and I don't know having stuffed animals has always been really important to me so I just really like that there was such an emphasis put on like not shaming somebody for feeling strongly about a plushie um because yeah i have several this is boo he's a numb wall so he's a narwhal but he's also ice cream and this is mallow the anxiety he's a tarot bubble tea and he's very squishy this is pichu he's a very small penguin and and this is link just link <laughs> I'm too lazy to go put them back, so they're just gonna hang out with me for the rest of the video. <laughs> the next quote is from Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte, um, which I do own a copy of, but I couldn't remember what page the quote was on, and I didn't want to rifle through the whole book, so I just looked it up. It is vain to say human beings ought to be satisfied with tranquility. They must have action, and they will make it if they cannot find it. Millions are condemned to a stiller doom than mine, and millions are in silent revolt against their lot. Nobody knows how many rebellions besides political rebellions ferment in the masses of life which people earth. Women are supposed to be very calm, generally. But women feel just as men feel. They need exercise for their faculties and a field for their efforts as much as their brothers do. They suffer from too rigid a restraint, too absolute a stagnation, precisely as men would suffer. And it is narrow-minded in their more privileged fellow creatures to say that they ought to confine themselves to making puddings and knitting stockings, to playing on the piano and embroidering bags. It is thoughtless to condemn them or laugh at them if they seek to do more or learn more than custom has pronounced necessary for their sex. How did anyone ever believe this was written by a man? <laughs> and while I, I do, I do respect everything that is said i will just say embroidering is fun <laughs> embroidering is nice but you know also one shouldn't be forced to only do embroidering if they do not want to um or such things so yeah i just love in your face feminism woo i ripped out a hair ow that was a lot hurt Next one is a short one from uh, Picture Us in the Light by Kelly Lloyd Gilbert on page 96. There are people so enshrined in your past they'll never stop mattering to you. Kind of similar to the, the Circe quote where it's just like, yeah, some people, even if they're only with you for a short time, they're like so entwined with who you have become or like they've changed your your life in such a way that they're always going to be there a little bit. Just a nice thought. This next one is from Rhythm of War by Brandon Sanderson. This is a conversation between Kaladin and Wit. So Wit has just told Kaladin a story about a little dog who wanted to become a dragon, so he did a bunch of things that he thought would make him a dragon, and they all kind of failed. But it ended up with him sort of finding a loving home. A little light, a little warmth, a little fire, and he felt ready to walk out into the winds again. Yet he knew the darkness would return. It always did. Can you tell me the real ending? Kaladin asked, his voice small. Before I go back out? Wit stood and stepped over, then put his hand on Kaladin's back and leaned in. That night, he said, the little dog snuggled into a warm bed beside the fire, hugged by the farmer's children, his belly full, and as he did, the dog thought to himself, I doubt any dragon ever had it so good anyway. He smiled and met Kaladin's eyes. It won't be like that for me. You told me it would get worse. It will, Wit said. But then it will get better. Then it will get worse again. Then better. This is life, and I will not lie by saying every day will be sunshine. But there will be sunshine again. And that is a very different thing to say. That is truth. I promise you, Kaladin, you will be warm again. 
Something that I find so impressive about Brandon Sanderson's writing is I don't know what you know his personal history is, but he writes mental illnesses so well. Like the way he describes Kaladin's, it's never you know clearly stated as depression and PTSD because this is a fantasy world, but it is very clearly depression and PTSD, and the way he writes Kaladin's depression is so correct. <laughs> and the way he describes how Kaladin feels when he's in his depressive episodes is just so... Like, same! Oh my gosh! And it's just so refreshing. I, I love it so much. Uh, the, and the last one is from Summer Bird Blue by Akemi Don Bowman. Because feeling the way I feel always felt normal to me, until I realized it wasn't what other people were doing. On page 333 and 334. This is in reference to the main character, Rumi, I think was her name? Um, her coming to terms, or finally understanding that she is on the asexual spectrum. And I love the way this is phrased because I too, am, I've mentioned this before, but I am asexual and the, <laughs> I can vividly remember the moment I realized that I was different from everyone else around me. I, I had a moment where I suddenly realized, where like I thought that what I was experiencing was normal or like, you know, maybe not everyone felt this way, but some people did. Um, some normal people did, and then I had <laughs> I had a moment where it was made very clear to me that that was not the case, and that I was experiencing something very different from literally everyone around me, um, which I'm from a tiny town, so it wasn't that many people, but still. And it, it just like, it was like running face first into a brick wall, and I think this quote really sums that up perfectly. Feeling the way I feel always felt normal to me until I realized it wasn't what other people were doing. Like, I just, I feel that in my soul. Huh, <sighs> wow, I didn't mean to get so emotional with these. Oopsie. And those are all the ones that are on the list for today. Thank you so much for watching and for getting emotional with me or for being here while I got super emotional. <laughs> Let me know what your favorite book quote is down in the comments. I would love to, to love to find out. And if you'd like to find me elsewhere, you can find me on Instagram as Leia Like the Princess, where you can also find my little embroidery and art store, Moonly Cat Creations, or you can go directly to its website at moonlycatcreations.com. Thank you again for watching, and until next time, Boo says, stay cozy.